Hello Love Church, welcome back to Weekday Word, which is part of Love Church Online. I'm Jose, I'm one of the students here, and today we're going to be looking at John 14, 6, when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and see what he means by it. Here we go, John 14, 6. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. In his book, the Scottish Christian preacher, John Duncan wrote about what he called the trilemma about Jesus. And it was this. Christ either deceived mankind by conscious fraud, or he was himself deluded and self-deceived, or he was divine. There is no getting out of this dilemma. Um, C.S. Lewis also made a similar point in which uh, he essentially said Jesus was either mad, a big fat liar, or God. And, I mean, you can't help but to think of that as well. Um, in, his, in his book, and at some point, he also said that people can't just call Jesus a moral teacher. He must be more or less than that. And we see what the writers mean when they say that. He, Jesus can't just be a moral teacher. He must be something else for better or for worse. So let's examine what Jesus mean, when, what Jesus says and what does it mean when he says he is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said he was the way. This was on his last week of life before he was crucified. And he said he was going to the Father, but the disciples didn't understand what that meant. Um, and they asked, and as they were asking where he was going and how they got there, he lays on them this profound truth. The only way to the Father is through me, says Jesus. This exclusive statement goes against the idea that there are many paths to God. And some of us know that that's the popular view today, that, um, you know, different religions have, are a different path to the same destination. What Jesus is saying here is that mm, I am the only way, and it's countercultural. What Jesus is saying is there is only one path, and that's through me. The truth, when Jesus says, I am the truth, we live in the age in which truth has become subjective. When uh, you are told to live your truth and as if your truth was different from my truth. And if that's the true way of living, then Jesus must then be wrong. He can't be the truth. He must only be a truth. But he didn't say, I'm the way, a truth and the life. He made it so exclusive as to say, I am the only truth. So according to Jesus' statement, any claim that doesn't line up with the character of Jesus is not truth. I'll repeat that again. Any claim or any statement that doesn't align, let's, let me break it down a little bit. Any statement, I don't essentially mean like the door was black. I'm, that's not, I'm not talking about that shallow phrase. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about a philosophy. Some people say, live your own truth, you know? You do you, boo, that kind of thing. But if that truth, if that truth in a way doesn't identify and doesn't align with the character of Jesus, then it's not longer a truth, according to Jesus' statements. That's challenging to hear. But if Jesus is who he says he is, then that's true. And the life. Essentially, Jesus is saying, in him there's all life. Jesus can resurrect all who believe in him. All of us have fallen short of, um, of God's standards one way or another. Our mistakes and our nature made it so that we'll never be perfect. But when we come to Jesus, we receive the truth that we don't have to be perfect. Because Jesus says that all who come to him will receive life because he himself is life. Again, 
countercultural. But maybe it's true. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.